You might need to unmute yourself. Hold on a second. Yeah. That's it? Yes. A very good morning. Thank you, David. Thank you to all who have put so much effort into singing, reading and devising this service. Um, we begin with a greeting and the prayer for um, the Colic for Purity. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first hymn is hymn 81. Christ triumphant ever ready, Saviour, Master, King. Lord of heaven, our life's host, give us as we sing. Yours the glory and the crown, the heart in hand, the eternal Let truth reveal the Son of Man on earth. Son of Majesty, conceived by your humble mouth. Yours the glory and the crown, the heart in hand, the eternal name. Suffering servant, scorned, ill-treated, victim crucified. Death is through the cross defeated, sinners justified. Yours the glory and the crown, the heart in hand, the eternal name. Praise the King and throne forever, high in heaven above. Sin and death and hell shall never stifle hymns of love. Yours the glory and the crown, the heart in hand, the eternal name. Upon you gazing, he shall be a song. Yours the glory and the crown, the heart in hand, the eternal name. So together, let us cast a look on the week that is past in our confinement, on all the things that were not perfect, on the hurt we have caused through our impatience, and in the light and hope of Christ's resurrection. Let us draw near to the Lord who is full of compassion and mercy. Like Mary at the empty tomb, we fail to grasp the wonder of your presence. Lord, have mercy. Like the disciples behind locked doors, we are afraid to be seen as your followers. Christ, have mercy. And like Thomas in the upper room, we are slow to believe. Lord, have mercy. 
Together, let us pray the collect. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. We beseech you, leave us not comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to the place where our Saviour Christ is gone before, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the same Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. taken from Peter, chapters 4 and 5. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place amongst you to test you, 
as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters throughout the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Here hands the reading. Let us pray the Psalm, Psalm 68. Would you answer with the sentences in bold? Let God rise up. Let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melts before the fire, let the wicked perish before God. <coughs> But let the righteous be joyful. Let them exult before God. Let them be jubilant with joy. Sing to God. Sing praises to his name. Lift up a song to him who rides upon the clouds. His name is the Lord. Be exultant before him. Father of orphans and protector of widows, is God in his holy habitation. God gives the desolate a home to live in. He leads out the prisoners to prosperity, but the rebellious live in a parched land. O oh God, when you went out before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked, the heavens poured down rain, at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. Rain in abundance, O oh God. You showered abroad. You restored your heritage when it languished. Your flock found a dwelling in it. In your goodness, O God, you provided for the needy. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Richard, you need to unmute yourself. Apologies. Yep. The Gospel is taken from John, chapter 17. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now that they know everything you have given me is from you, 
for the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I come from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, as we are one. This is the word of the Lord.
lovely singing. Thank you very, very much. And um, today's readings are awfully difficult, aren't they? Um, I think the most appropriate background to relate to what I'm going to try to say is Emma Healy with the charging rhino behind her. Let's think about what the first letter of Peter uh, is trying to say. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is coming towards you to test you as though something strange were happening to you, but rejoice. Now, the first letter of Peter is addressed, if you read the first verse of it, to the elect dwelling in the diaspora, in the dispersion. Uh, sadly, it's unclear which one you see, because Jerusalem, of course, has been sacked many times repeatedly, and the Jewish people exiled just as many times. It could be written by the Apostle Peter from prison in Rome. That's what people have assumed through centuries, but that would be quite surprising because this letter is written in very, very elegant Greek, literary Greek. It could be Plato almost, which would be very surprising from the pen of St. Peter. Um, even his Aramaic accent wasn't the best, you know, remember that when he was warming himself by the fire before Jesus' arrest, his accent gave him away. People spotted he had to be Galilean, he was a country bumpkin, and it showed. Um, so this letter could have been written after the second Jewish revolt, the one uh, people know less about, that of Bar Kokhba, which ended with the mass suicide in the fortress of Masada, which I think many of you visited, so in 135 AD. And it was, you know, a pretty conclusive defeat. Um, it was annihilation on a grand scale. So, so why does Peter, and let's call him Peter, why does he write that his hearers should rejoice nevertheless? Because he wrote, no matter what hardships you may have to endure, and I quote him, in his great mercy, God has given us new birth, new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And let's think about this new birth for a moment. New birth. I don't know about you, but I tend to be a little indignant when born again Christians tell me that I'm going to hell in a handcart if I'm not born again like them. Uh, well, uh, as Dennis Skinner, I believe, said, pardon me for getting it right the first time. He's right. It's a curious assumption that such a second birth is needed because something was wrong with you in the first place, even if you were a Christian already. And something was so wrong that it would doom you unless you become another man or another woman, unless you are literally born anew, born again. I don't think there are two types of Christians, the unregenerate and the saved. You either follow Christ as best you can or you don't. Still, um, some assume that this second birth is conditional in accepting Jesus in your heart as your personal saviour and trusting in his saving death for you, his atoning death. Um, yet, note that Peter in his letter did write that God has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, not through faith in what his death has wrought. Hope and resurrection, not faith and death. It is hope in Christ's resurrection that gives us new birth, he asserts. And we can make sense of that, I think. There's an enormous gap between living as if this life were all there is and living with the sure hope it's not. Uh, many ills, I think, spring from the belief that this life is all there is. And I said belief because that's what it is, you know, just like the belief that there, there will be another life. 
um, evidence that this life is, is not evidence that there is no other last I checked, no more than evidence that apples exist disprove the existence of oranges. All manners of ills are born from either belief, if trusted blindly. Firm faith in the world to come can breed an unhealthy neglect for even the most basic justice in the present one and some dreadful fatalism to boot you know never you mind you pour down trodden sods everything will be better in heaven but there are downsides to to believing that this is the only life the only world it's a, the only bite of the apple you'll ever get this world is ours to do as we please with it exploit it pollute it who cares the end is nigh and it will truly be the end these are two sides of the same coin i think psych psychologically two ways that people have of ridding themselves of their guilt it's quite blatant in the belief that there will be no reward no punishment no consequence but born again christianity is equally dodgy uh, let me illustrate this I've been hearing confessions for decades now, um, more so in other parishes that I'm St. Luke's, but I know a, a Roman Catholic lady who did something truly, truly hideous. And she found it quite difficult to live with, and rightly so. But then, you know, she met a born again preacher and all her sins were white clean. She was born again. No need to think about the dreadful past anymore. Now, I believe in forgiveness, like your garden variety Christian, but if you dared even mention that this may have been a cheap spiritual trick to her, all hell would break loose. Her entire sense of self now depended on the belief that the slate had been wiped right clean. No attempt to explain how her receiving this second birth in no way changed anything for the people she'd hurt so appallingly. It was a squeaky clean start, a new baptism and a new birth. This isn't new in the history of our church. Uh, some people in the early church believe that no certain forgiveness of sins could be granted after baptism some uh, evil Roman emperors, therefore, knowing that they had to do a um, little evil, shall we say, indeed a lot of evil to stay at the top. Some of them delayed baptism till they were on their deathbeds. But surely, again, this too is spiritual cheating. Forgiveness, in the case of the Catholic lady, or, or in this case, forgiveness is not the erasure of all past deeds. Rather, it is their overcoming through love and repentance. Because we are able to forgive one another, God also shall forgive. That is what our Lord taught us. Whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever we forgive on earth will be forgiven in heaven. That is what Christ taught. That is what we ask every time we pray the Lord's Prayer, as we will do in a minute. Forgive us as we also forgive. God has promised that his hands would be tied by our decisions. Uh, the forgiveness of the very people we sin against must be secure, secured if it can be, um, and only go to the priest if it cannot, not to escape God's wrath if you don't. That is not the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's a God worthy of derision, really. Um, something from a Monty Python sketch. You remember the holy hand grenade of Antioch? No? Well, it wasn't far off the mark. Uh, it goes, then raise on high the holy hand grenade of Antioch, saying to the Lord, bless this, O Lord, that with it thou mayest blow thine enemies to tiny bits in thy mercy. Then must thou count to three, then lobbest thou the holy hand grenade in the direction of thine foes, who, being naughty in God's sight, shall snuff it. 
In his great mercy, God has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. The whole chapter of Peter's letter that we began to read ends with this line. As he who calls you is holy, be holy yourselves. For it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. Not you shall be wrathful or vengeful, because I am wrathful or vengeful. But you shall be merciful, as I the Lord am merciful. To be holy as God is holy is to be like him, relentlessly forgiving. This is what our Lord taught us in no uncertain terms, that is to be perfect, as our Heavenly Father is perfect. Amen. Oh, 
spirit and in union with Christ let us pray to the Father Christ triumphant ever reigning Saviour Master King yours the glory and the crown the high renown the eternal name blessed are you Lord our God from the ascension of your Son you have given us a glimpse of eternal life and the promise of your abiding presence. You have promised to be with us always. We ask to be for your blessing upon all who preach your word and who witness to you in their daily lives. We thank you for their dedication and perseverance during these difficult times when so many are in need of care, support and guidance. We also thank you for the opportunity to come together in worship in this way. In our cycle of prayer for local church communities, we remember today St Andrew's Battersea Rise and pray for the health and welfare of their staff and congregation. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Risen Lord, we pray for the time when the kingdoms of the world will be seen as your kingdom. We ask for your blessing upon all rulers, leaders and politicians, that they will judge fairly, guide wisely, and give generously. We remember all those peoples throughout the world who feel that their lives are in turmoil through circumstances and events that seem to be beyond their control. We pray that they will receive the help and assistance that is required in these difficult times. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray especially, Lord, for our own community and neighbourhood and ask that we are there for and able to help those who are in need. We thank you for green spaces and the possibilities for enjoyment of this beautiful spring. However, we also remember those who are struggling to cope with the complexities of family life during this lengthy period of confinement. Those for whom employment and livelihoods are in question. And those who are concerned about extended separation from their families and loved ones. We especially commend to you today the work of Lambeth Mediation Service, who provide mediation with families in the workplace and between neighbours in our adjoining borough of Lambeth. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. 
Thank you, Lord, for the dedication and tireless work of our health and care services. We pray that they too will have all the help and support that they need to keep themselves and their loved ones safe and well during these difficult times. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit, particularly Sarah Jane Staines. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Hear us, Lord, as we remember those who have died. And according to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Especially Eustace Crawford, Peter Holmes, Catherine French, and Annabel Allett's mother, Sheila Gillam. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. I wonder if you'd uh, lend me your attention for a little while longer because the next two notices are really important. The first is to remind everybody that on the 7th of June, we will uh, do the licensing of Young He as Associate Minister to our parish uh, online. So uh, the four parishes the benefit of Four parishes of the benefits of Wimbledon will join us. So that'll be a bit of a technical feat. Uh, we will have a guest preacher who is the Reverend Brian Prothero. 
And Bishop Richard will, of course, officiate over the licensing. So do be there for that. Uh, the second is you should have received a, an email. It, you're being copied into the government's response to the Archdeacons of England. And you'll see that there is some sort of light at the end of the tunnel. We will be able to open the church, uh, at least for private prayer in the future. Um, and I do know that it may seem to many, indeed I, I happen to know that it, it may seem to many that the Church of England's attitude to, towards the coronavirus pandemic has been to hide under a rock. Uh, maybe it has, you know, but nevertheless we must, we must move uh, carefully and lawfully. Um, you will no, have noticed no, no I'm sure the level of anger and resentment directed at those who break the lockdown unlawfully uh, these days. And we can't go down that route. We can't hurry things. And we will have to proceed as the government tells us to. So do read it carefully and mercifully. It, it, you've, it's in your email box. And, uh, and if you want to talk about it, well, get on the phone to the vicarage. Um, Otherwise, I hope you will have a, a great week. Sorry, the blessing has disappeared. And let us pray together for a blessing upon ourselves, our homes, our friends and neighbours. May Christ, who out of defeat brings new hope and a new future, fill us with his new life. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us this Easter tide and always. Amen. <laughs>
Oh, yeah. 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 Oh,